Hey folks, the Waylaid Supplies Reputation System has received multiple updates since the start of Season of Discovery Phase 2, but the most notable change is the addition of new rewards that you can unlock after reaching Revered. These rewards include brand new Binds and Account jewelry, which can be mailed to low-level alts, effectively serving as heirlooms minus the 10% experience buff. The Reputation Vendor also offers you a unique 16-slot bag, which is the largest bag that you can currently obtain in Sod. In this video, I'll explain all of the quality of life changes that Blizzard has made to the Waylaid Supply System in Phase 2, and I'll show you the best farming spots for higher level crates so that you can get your hands on the heirlooms and 16 slot bag as quickly as possible. The basic mechanics of this system are mostly unchanged from Phase 1. Crates can be found rarely from mobs in the open world, and a bit more commonly inside chests. The most impactful change is that crates are no longer unique, meaning you can carry multiple at a single time and you don't need to constantly ferry them back to major cities. The downside to this change is that it's no longer possible to hand over unfilled crates in exchange for a lower chunk of rep. You must fill the crate with the necessary ingredients if you want to increase your reputation with the Waylight Supplies faction. It's worth noting that this change applies retroactively to the lower level crates from Phase 1 in addition to the new crates for levels 25 to 40. That being said, Blizzard also reduced the requirements to fill most crates and massively buffed the amount of gold that you receive from turn-ins. The higher tier crates will give you 12 gold upon a successful turn-in, so in some cases you'll actually end up making more money than it took to fill the crate. If you're curious to see a full list of the different crates and learn exactly how much golden rep each one gives, I've detailed that in the pinned comment on this video. Also, if you're new to Sod and are unfamiliar with the other core mechanics of the system, I'd recommend watching my previous video on Waylight Supplies, which can be found linked in the description below. Before I discuss the crate farming strategies that I've been using in Phase 2, I want to go over the new rewards in a bit more detail. As previously mentioned, Reaching Revered will unlock a 16-slot bag and three new BOA necklaces that provide agility, strength, and spell power. You'll also be able to purchase an alchemy recipe for Lesser Arcane Elixir, which is one of the best consumables that casters can use in Nomergon. While those are the only new rewards for Revered, Blizzard also retroactively added rewards for Friendly and Honored. For starters, the runes locked behind this reputation previously required you to reach Honored, but they've now been changed to only require Friendly. This will make it much easier for players to unlock critical runes such as Just a Flesh Wound, which I think is a great decision on Blizzard's end. To compensate for this, Blizzard has added new BOA rings to the Honored Rewards, and just like the necklaces at Revered, there are three in total with Strength, Agility, and Spell Power. There's also a bonus engineering recipe at Honored for Soul Vessel, which is an item that Warlocks will need to obtain to earn one of their runes at level 40. Now we can finally discuss the best farming spots for the new crates added in Phase 2. As previously mentioned, you can either get these crates as a rare drop from mobs or loot them semi-consistently out of chests. While chests aren't guaranteed to always drop waylaid supplies, opening them is the only reliable way to farm crates. That being said, not all chests are the same, and depending on the zone and the level of the nearby mobs, the chests you'll find can contain crates anywhere in the level 25 to 40 range. If you're trying to increase your rep from honored to revered, the lowest possible crate that you can earn reputation from is the level 30 crate. This means you should avoid farming in zones such as Duskwood, as the chests there can sometimes drop level 25 waylaid supplies which are functionally worthless. As for which crates within the level 30 to 40 range are the best to farm, it really depends on the prices for items on your server. In my experience, the best crates to farm are the level 40 variants, since they give you a whopping 1k reputation, and certain crates like White Bandit Masks are really cheap to fill. If you're looking for chests that primarily drop these level 40 boxes, the Badlands and Desolus are going to be your best options. Personally, I really liked farming in the Badlands, as every single chest spawn has a chance to contain these level 40 boxes. This zone is also relatively isolated and tends to not attract many levelers, so you usually won't have much competition if you're hunting for chests. If that wasn't already good enough, a lot of chest spawns in the Badlands are only surrounded by a handful of mobs, making it very easy for you to access them. Many zones like Duswallow Marsh only have chests that spawn within incredibly dense areas, which makes the farm a lot more challenging. While the Badlands is a fantastic option, I did also mention that Desolus is a great farming spot for these chests. Things are a bit different here, as the southern half of the zone will contain level 40 crates, while chests in the northern half of the zone tend to drop level 30 crates. Despite what I said before about level 40 crates being the best, it's actually not that bad to get a few level 30 crates every now and then. If you're farming these chests on a level 40 character, you'll tend to be able to kill mobs in Northern Desolus very quickly, which allows you to easily access these lower level chests. Many of these crates are also very cheap to fill, and they provide you with 700 reputation, which is pretty solid relative to the cost. 
One extra advantage to farming in Desolus is that many chests will spawn within the Magrim or Gelkis centaur camps, and if you're not hostile with that tribe, you can simply walk up to the chest and loot it without a fight. If you're not interested in running laps around the zone, these camps are one of the best places to farm chests if you're mostly AFK. As for some other zones, Alterac Mountains has a fair amount of chests, but the mob density tends to be high and many spawn locations are surrounded by elite ogres. Arathi Highlands is a great zone to farm level 30 to 35 crates, especially from chests in the various farms or troll camps. However, you can only find level 40 crates out of chests in Stromgard or the Underwater Naga section, which are both fairly tedious areas to navigate. Finally, while Stranglethorn Vale does have a ton of potential chest spawn locations, the zone is gigantic and the mob density is relatively high, so creating a good farming route can be difficult. Also, this should go without saying, but Stranglethorn is one of the most populated zones in Phase 2, especially during the Blood Moon, so you'll tend to have a lot of competition over chests. It is possible to farm Waylaid supplies in zones other than the ones I've mentioned here, but they tend to be fairly inefficient due to a variety of reasons. Personally, I'd recommend trying out Desolus or the Badlands first, and if they're too crowded, you can switch to one of the alternatives that I mentioned. If you found this video helpful, I'd highly appreciate it if you could toss it a like, as that'll help other people find it as well.